plastic. Have you ever heard of a plastic that can dance in the light? Pretty sure not, right? Rather, people often associate it with garbage, with waste, that will contaminate the street, the ocean, the forest. And of course, there is some truth in there. And if you type the word plastic in a Google search, this is about the first picture you get. But plastic go well beyond. And today, as a material scientist, I would like to show you why I find personally plastic so amazing and what type of amazing thing you can do with. But before that, have you even realized that plastic is what our modern life is made of? Just take a second, look around you. You'll figure out that this screen, this curtain, the lightning, most of those things contain plastics. So the plastic revolution has already occurred without even having us to realize it. For instance, this morning, easy example, I got dressed. And there, I checked the composition of my clothes. And guess what? More than half of what I'm wearing now is actually made of plastics. But beyond clothes, plastic also offers opportunities to build like a car, like a plane. And therefore, it reduces drastically the fuel consumption. And because plastic can nowadays be made transparent, colorful, water-resistant, impact-resistant, flame-resistant, and so on and so on, they will find application in most of our daily products. So tonight, when you leave, play the game and try to check the composition, or at least try to feel how many of the things that you use on a daily basis are either made partially or fully out of plastic. Trust me, you'll be surprised by the results. But actually, what is a plastic? We hear about it all the time, but what really it is? Well, plastic is essentially polymer. Polymer stands for poly for many and mers for parts. And I still remember the first time I heard about this concept during a class. As we just did, the teacher made all of us stand as such we were monomer. So essentially the constitutive element of a polymer. So as you see in this video, I guess it reminds you some things. As such, we are quite weak and you can be pushed easily. But now, as you saw it, in the example before, if you hold each other's hand, then we form a chain, and then we become stronger. So this is essentially how plastics are made, long chain of molecules, and this procures these specific mechanical properties. So while plastics that surround us are mainly static, the new trend in material science is to go toward smart, responsive material. So that means that the plastic can move, can change color, can change property, and so on, it responds to a change in its environment. So while this has been studied now for many years, not many people are, is actually aware of it. So I've selected a few examples to show you the amazing capabilities of plastic and give you a flavor of what you can expect in the scientific world in, a, in this specific field in the coming years. So here are the three examples I've chosen. The first one, the first area where we're going to use smart plastic is in textile. So if you use smart fiber that can sense and react to heat and humidity, you can create clothes that keep you dry and fresh when you exercise. It can also give you feedback on your exercise. There are other applications. You can also think of a piece of film that will be able to sense a change in temperature or even to sense a different molecule and give you direct feedback, as you can see here. The last example I've chosen is a self-healing material. So now, if you have a car, and if you have a scratch on your car, how do you do? Well, you have to go and fix it or change the paint. If you use such coating, in this case, you only need to come with a heat source or a light source, and your uh, scratch will disappear. How great does that sound? Much easier. And the list is much longer. But for today, I would like to focus on one specific application which is the deformation of a plastic in response to light. And really just my, with my own eyes, without even having a, have to look at it through a microscope. <coughs> Sounds exciting. At least to me, I was really excited the first time I heard about it. And even more when I saw how well we could control the deformation of a piece of plastic. So let me just explain to you how it works, and then I'll show you the cool thing we have made recently. So to control the deformation of a plastic, we rely on the concept that is the alignment. So for that, we use specific molecules that we call liquid crystal. You may have heard of them in your LCD, liquid crystal display at home. 
So basically, these molecules look a bit like Mikado. And they have, uh, their, um, their main advantage is that they can align with respect to each other. So now, you have to realize that we attach them all together, like we did before. And if you are able to just push one of the molecule to deform or to trigger it to deform, that will be sufficient to pull on the chain and to make everything move. So this is what we have uh, done. So we add a small amount of a molecule that will go from a straight to a bended state in response to light. So this is shown in this animation, where you see the yellow one are the one that will go from straight to bended. And by doing so, you have very large deformation of your plastic film. And that's also because we use a specific alignment throughout the thickness. So you have contraction at the top and expansion at the bottom. So that's basically how it works. Pretty simple, isn't it? And this has been done already for many years. But what we recently shown is that if this yellow molecule now can go from the straight to the bended to the straight to the bended state really, really quickly, then we could make something cool. So now we were able to make this tiny creature crawl at the surface. And I can imagine the first time I saw it, I was playing with it for many hours in the lab. And it was really fun trying to tame this little creature. But well, as scientists, we always try to improve what we do. So here, the limitation that I, I felt I had was that I still had to scan the light over the surface of the film. I'm pretty lazy, so what I wanted to have is just to sit, turn on the button, and watch. So this is not so trivial. So because, but one thing I noticed when I was playing with this creature, was it always want to escape from the light. So what we did, it's not, doesn't sound so nice to the little creature, but well, we forced it to stay in the beam light by just taping it to the substrate. And we did it in a such a way that it still has some space, we are nice, space to wiggle around. And by doing so, we could obtain this type of motion. So here what is happening is that if you have a pre-curved piece of film, then it will deform. OK, but by deforming, it will place another piece of the material in the light. And therefore, that will also place a new piece of material, and so on and so on. You, you get the principle, I guess. So there we were quite happy. But then come the, still, when you look at it for long, you realize that hmm, it feels like this thing is kind of frustrated, you know? It's like, it's keep moving on the same spot. And you feel like you want to just set it free so that it can just go on its own. So we were wondering how to do that. So the main key that we had to keep in mind is that you still need this pre-curved shape so that you have this uh, shadow and the part that are in the light. But at the same time, it should be framed to something. So this is exactly what we've done. We placed it in a frame, a plastic frame, obviously, that uh, was able, uh, that was light enough so that it could be carried by the film. So without saying more, this is what we've done, and this is what we could obtain. <laughs> this was for the first time that we could make a, a piece of polymer walk in the light. And as you can see here also, that because of this specific alignment, now if you flip it upside down, then it's also able to walk in the reverse direction. So okay, at this point, we were really happy and excited about this. So we started to share with people. And the main question that come after the excitement is, okay, it's cool, but what is it, what is it for? <laughs> <laughs> so of course, we have thought about it. And um, let's make things clear, it's far from being commercialized. And actually, the funniest application we had came from a journalist who asked us, is it possible to put it under my fridge so that it would grasp the bread crumble that are otherwise inaccessible? <laughs> well, maybe, we don't know. We didn't think in that direction. What we were more thinking of was to apply such material on solar panel in the desert. Because now, after a sandstorm, the efficiency of your solar panel will decrease drastically. And the only solution that we have now is just to bring a poor guy and clean one by one, which is, you can imagine, really time consuming. So now, if you put such material onto a solar panel, and it starts to oscillate by itself, then you can imagine that's an efficient way to just carry the particle of sand out of the solar panel. And we've tried that in the lab, and it shows its promises. So while this, uh, specific ex this example remains really specific, 
it shows the type of application that you can think of and the type of deformation you can have. So you will see more of those crazy material coming in the market in the coming years. So please don't be afraid next time you hear about a new plastic discovery. It's not only plasti more plastic in the ocean. It can also be a new way to cure people, or a new way or more efficient way to build houses, or even new technological development that we are not even aware of yet. So now, knowing all the capabilities of plastic, the type of deformation, where you can potentially use them, the only limit is basically your imagination. So now, my question for you would be how would you see the material of tomorrow? <laughs>